Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Metastellar YouTube channel. My name is Maria Korolov. I'm the editor at Metastellar, and I'm here to talk about the number one best-selling free science fiction book on Amazon today. And it's got a convict who's about to go to prison for murder, but instead is sent to serve in the Marines, the Space Marines. Space! Space, yes. I love that premise. But before we get to that, we have nine other books to get through on today's top ten free science fiction and fantasy list on Amazon. You see, every single Friday, this is what we do. We read the first three chapters of every book on that list, and we tell you what's worth reading and what we like about it, or what we don't. So today, uh, I was helped out on this with um, Metastellar editors Alex Korolov, Amira Lutfi, uh, Terrence Smith, and Carla Nordland, and community member Rommel Madre. And Terrence and Rommel are here with me now. Hello, Terrence, and hello, Rommel. Hey, guys. Hi, hi. Hello. And I love having you, so I'm not here by myself. I really appreciate you joining me, and a Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> you seem really enthusiastic. It's going to no, be it's, great. No, it's going to be it's awesome. Like... AIs are going to take our jobs, and it's just going to be wonderful. Yeah. Uh, Maria, the past few years have been. We uh, will become fire to our robot overlords, right? Uh, yeah, that's what I want. Robots taking over the world. Ex well, don't, well, don't the say that too loudly because I'm sure they're listening in. They're probably in the planning stages already. <laughs> well, I for one welcome our robot overlords. Hey there, robots. I love you guys. Please kill me last. All right. <laughs> we'll ask Bender from Futurama what's going on there. <laughs> yeah, Bender needs some lucker first. <laughs> All right. So uh, it, this has been a fantastic year at Metastellar. We've published more than 700 stories and articles by over 300 different authors. We have our first anthology came out this summer. You can buy it at all the major online bookstores in print and electronic form. Um, and we had uh, hundreds of submissions to our every submission cycle. Terrence helped out with that. We've had a, more than 150 videos that we posted here on this YouTube channel. Hey guys, we had more than a quarter million YouTube, uh, more than a quarter million page views on our website and tens of thousands of views on our YouTube channel. So thank you for watching. And if you don't want to miss any of these free Friday videos, subscribe and hit that little bell that tells you when a new video is posted. So you don't miss anything. Um, oh, we've also like interviewed Mercedes Lackey and Larry Niven and other great science fiction writers here on this channel as well. So check out some of the other playlists. Um, if you click through to the channel, Long Lost Friends, have been interviewing authors and it's been fantastic. Uh, so let's get to the books. Why are we blathering around? Okay, so book number 10, Kingdoms of Sand by Daniel Aronson. Um, this was the number 10 best-selling book on today's list. Let me make it a little bit bigger so you can see it. Um, there you go. There is an in big format. And uh, this is a collection of the first three of six books in the Kingdom of Sand high fantasy series. Originally, they're like three to five dollars each, and they're not in Kindle Unlimited. Uh, but the author, Daniel Aronson, has been in this list before. Um, so this is an epic fantasy billed as Game of Thrones meets Spartacus. So it's based on a fantasy world that sounds very much like ancient Rome. And it has another kingdom where a lot of the action is set that sounds a lot like Jerusalem or Israel back in, in that time period. So um, if you like that setting and that kind of story, this could be very interesting for you. Um, it's a little grim and a little depressing. And there's a lot of bad stuff that happens, including a little dog gets killed right from the very beginning and slaves are tortured. And it's a little dark and gloomy for me, 
Also, there's a lot of characters um, and the point of view switches between different characters, the, the, the family that's defending themselves against basically the Roman Empire and the emperor of the Roman Empire who's coming in, taking over this little kingdom. So um, a lot of a lot of th threads to follow in the story. So it's a big, complex epic. So if you like that kind of thing, like maybe if you're a Game of Thrones fan, and I understand there's a few people out there who are, um, this could be right up your alley. But for me, it's a little grim. I like my escapist reading light. I don't mind murders, but I want them to be fun murders. I don't want it to be the kind of murders that make you feel bad for the people, you know? I want I want them to be like fun cartoony murders, right? So anyway, so I'm gonna pass on this book. But if you do like a more grim kind of epic fantasy, check it out. Next, we have the Kerrigan Kids, uh, the box set of the first three books in the Kerrigan Kids series from W. J. May, who's a USA Today best-selling author, and. Oh, oh, by the way, the previous author was also a USA Today bestselling author. The people who are on this top 10 list are like really good writers. These are all great books. All right. So this particular book is about a magical school where powerful students use their magic to rebel against the educational system. I guess they don't want to learn anything. And Amira Lutfi read this one. And uh, she said that um, in this book, the students all hate the school. The, they, they enter the school when they're 13 and they stay there until they're 18. And Aria, the protagonist, has um, magical parents who saved the world several times. And so she's kind of having to live up to their legacy. And her parents are super successful and she feels kind of in their shadow. And so um, uh, Aria and her friends form a, kind of a gang at the school and they're disrupting class and violating rules because they're so special and their parents are so famous. Um, and uh, Amira says she's not really feeling any of these characters. Um, this isn't the kind of book I would read. I don't like magical school books and I don't like young adult stories. All the teenage drama annoys me, but this is a super popular genre. And if you are a fan of it, W.J. May is a super popular author. So the books are free. Check them out while they are still free. Authors and publishers take books in and out of the free, free list a lot. They will often make the first book in a series or the first three books in a series free in order to pull people in for a limited time. And sometimes the books go off the free list before the day is over. So grab them up as soon as you can. Uh, then we have uh, this book, Velvet by Lisette Marshall. And Rommel read this one. So um, it's the first of three books in the Princess and the Spy medieval fantasy, a romance series. And the entire series is in Kindle Unlimited. A Kindle Unlimited is where you pay 10 bucks a month and you read all the books you want. It's a really great deal. Some of the biggest authors are in it, like J.K. Rowling, for what it's worth, and a bunch of other ones. Uh, so I definitely look for Kindle Unlimited books because I read a lot and I don't want to spend a lot of money. And the authors still get paid. It's kind of like a Netflix for books. So, Rommel, what did you think of this book? Um, It's... it's... Well, it's it's it was an interesting car um, book. The character is a strong female lead. Um, she's nineteen years years old, and she she a bit she reminds me a bit of Lady Macbeth, and that <laughs> she she she's very she has a lot of intrigue to her. Um, you know, maybe a bit of duplicity, but she's no she's she's much more comfortable with playing with with playing with um pol playing politics and strategy. Than playing with I don't know handbags or something, um, so she's a very thinking, uh, interesting uh, take on a character. Um, basically, she it's about her coming back to her kingdom um, as princess. No one really expects her to take on any kind of power power role, but she has expectations of taking a power role. 
Um, um, along with that, she has uh, met uh, an old spy master who uh, really doesn't think much of her. But when she comes back, he, he realizes that she's much more formidable. And he has a sort of attraction to her. Uh, the book itself is 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 a interesting take on the female character in terms of um, a strong female lead, and you know it, it it will suit someone who's into that Game of Thrones kind of vibe, where there where there is a a female character who is who is very um I suppose uh, planning. It it's it's kind of like. You would see um, the Gardner uh, lady in Game of Thrones, the one who killed herself or something. Don't don't give it away. <laughs> well, <Spoilers. laughs> But anyway, yeah. Right, so oh, I don't a, care about that. It was, that anyway. a, it was well, well written. It's a bit of a slow burn, but it gets you there. And um, for those readers in the genre, I think it would be you know suitable for them. Are you gonna stick with it? Uh for, for me, I. It's not really the genre that I would stick to. Um, I think there's some aspects of it that I like. I like. I like. I would like a book about Lady Macbeth, <laughs> <laughs> like how she got there. Um, but this is a book that parallels in some way, you know, a, someone with a similar character trait. So it's it's, but All it's right. not it's not my genre. <laughs> Okay, uh, next we have um, The Dragon Keepers of Dumara by Jessica Kemery. The first of three books in the Dragon Keepers fantasy series. Uh, the other books are $5 each, but they're all in Kindle Unlimited. So I'm a big fan of The Dragon Riders of Pern, a classic series. If you haven't read it, oh my God, they're wonderful by Anne McCaffrey. Um, I read it when I was a teenager, and I fell in love with the world and its people, so I have high hopes for this book. And uh, uh, the title pulled me in, the premise pulled me in. Mila's father is the dragon keeper of Dumara, works for the king, and caring for the dragons. And uh, his father did that, and his grandfather did that, and so on and so on and for generations. So it's a job that's passed down uh, through the family. And there was a battle between dragons... And when since dragons fight to the death, um, uh, her father is worried that there's a dead dragon out there somewhere. And he and Mila go out to find it. And they're out in a valley looking for the for the dragon. They find her in a clearing at the bottom of the valley. And it's it's a female dragon. It's one of their it, it's the it's the she she's the top female dragon of, of this castle. And the dragon's mate has found her too and is now lying next to the dead dragon, crying over her body. And uh, the mate is injured. So Mila and her father have to treat this injured dragon and get the dead body's dragon back to the castle. Um, but uh, some other dragons fly up um, and they and they carry and they fly away with the body and they take it back Um to their uh, caves underneath the castle where, where they live. And uh, Mila goes back to the village where they have a little shop for her med medical supplies and joins the father in the under the castle to treat the, the injured dragon. So uh, I love this story. This was a very, very nice story. Everyone is nice and everyone's likable. Mila's nice and likable. The, the the princess, uh, the king's sons in this castle are nice and likable. The shopkeeper's assistant is nice and likable. Um, and it's it's just a warm, pleasant story to read. Uh, to me, it did remind me of the Pern books. It had also reminded me of the Diana Wynne Jones books, like Howl's Moving Castle. So if you like that kind of book a very kind of nice, warm fantasy story, then I highly recommend it. I will be sticking with it. Um, there's a little too little murder and ass kickery in it. Uh, but sometimes you want a nice break from all the murder and rampage. 
And this is the book that will do that for you. Um, then we have another book, which I read, Displaced by Bridget Baker. The first book in the seven book birthright series. The other books are a dollar to five dollars each, and they're not in Kindle Unlimited. And I have to go spray my dog because he's whining behind me. Buddy, stop. <laughs> All right. Yes, yeah, see, this is <laughs> this is my anti-howling dog mechanism. Like, buddy, stop howling. All right. Okay, so uh, this place. Um, so this is set in a modern day, but in a kind of alternate world where, that has magic people in it that are called Evians. And Chancery is an Evian. She's 17. She lives on an island in a, near Hawaii. Or her mother is the Evian uh, Empress and has ruled for nearly 900 years. Chancery should have been killed at birth because she has some kind of disability, but they left her alive. So these Evians are not nice people. And her best friend is uh, Lark, who's secretly half human. And if the other Evians find out, they'll kill her. Yeah, they're really not nice people. Um... And Lark wants to go into the intelligence agency of the Evians and go out and live among the humans. But it's a competitive kind of entrance exam. Um, so she thinks if she defeats Chancery in a challenge, she'll be sure to get a spot. But people won't believe that this battle was real and not staged unless they have a big falling, big public falling out first. So they plan to have a row in public so people think that they're at odds. Uh, and if Lark can't get into this intelligence section, she'll be stuck working for her Uncle Max, restructuring corporations all day long. I was so confused by the premise of this book. I have, like, no idea what's going on. Uh, and uh, and Chancery is third in line for, this th for, for the throne of the Evians, even though she has this disability and should have been killed. Uh, but she's right next in line behind her evil twin. Yes, she's got an evil twin. And also, all the human rulers on Earth know about the Evians. And Chancery's mother's birthday is coming up, and a bunch of global leaders are coming to pay their respects. Uh, they're all just figureheads for the Evians. But most humans don't know that Evians exist. They're like secret gods, playing with human fates on a whim. Oh, and Chancery has a crush on her evil twin's sister's boyfriend. So, super confusing. I don't like Chancery. I don't like her mother. I don't like Lark. Uh, I don't like teenagers in general. I hate their drama and their problems. I don't like the Evians. They seem like evil and cruel. So, I am not particularly caught up in this story and won't be sticking with it. But if you like that kind of drama and evil twins and... And, and crushes on other people's boyfriends and competitions and battles and corporate intrigue thrown in and global politics. Well, this book has it all. So uh, so pick it up. Um, so, so, <laughs> so if she doesn't become a spy, she's going to be a corporate bond restructurer? Yeah, I know. That's just a <laughs> I mean, like, what a what a weird premise. <laughs> and, and they're 17. They're teenagers. Like, I mean, that's a little too early to decide, isn't it? <laughs> I'm going to be, if I don't become a spy, I'll be an actuary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can trust table. All right. Uh, the next book on this list, let me make it a little bigger for you guys, uh, is um let's see um how do i make there we go there it goes uh realm of dragons by morgan rice the first of eight books in the age of sorcerers epic fantasy series the other books are three to seven dollars each but they're not in kindle unlimited and morgan rice has been on this list before and terrence read this book so terrence what did you think of it Well, to me, it is. To me, it reads off like a checklist of every fantasy trope 
you have uh, you have the poor commoner boy who's prophesied to be some kind of chosen one. You have dragons. You have uh, sibling rivalries within the royal family, and the eldest daughter is set up for an arranged marriage. The writing style didn't particularly strike me as anything that great. It just seemed like uh, uh, one of the male fantasy descriptions. I I didn't uh, for me, it only started getting interesting when we got to the perspective of the eldest daughter of the royal family and getting to see what her story is and all of this. And the story opens up with the king, his son, one of his sons at least, and a group of soldiers find a dead dragon on the outskirts of town, and no one's ever really seen anything like this before, so the king thinks it's some kind of omen about things to come, and personally, I think they should just get the dragonborn from Skyrim to handle the situation. <laughs> to me, this isn't something that I would be continuing reading. Probably not, but that's just my preference. If you like uh, uh, classic fantasy tropes and maybe this is one for you all right so next we have uh let me pull it up there we go um oh that's the wrong one hmm? there you go mirrors and monsters this is actually number four so we we had the the slides switched. Sorry, people. Uh, so this is Mirrors and Monsters by Demelza Carlton. It's actually number four on the list, not number three. Uh, and it's a standalone book of fantasy and romance short stories. Usually it's a dollar, but today it's free. Demelza Carlton has been all over this list, like multiple times, like dozens of times uh, since we've been doing these free Fridays for the last couple of years. We reviewed a ton of her books. Um, in particular, she has a 27-book romance and medieval fairy tale series. And we've reviewed a lot of those books. They're retellings of classic fairy tales. And Carla Nordland read this particular book. And she, wrote, she read a couple of different stories from it. She read Enchant, which is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. And uh, then she skipped ahead into the middle of the book and read The Gargoyle and the Archaeologist, a paranormal romance with a gargoyle who's protecting an archaeologist. And she says that she really liked it. So there's the six stories in the collection, and they're all lead-ins for her longer uh, romance and medieval fairy tale book series. And she... Um, she says these are great short reads, like if you're on a work or lunch break, and you can pick and choose from your favorite tropes and subgenres, because there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, so uh, really a great way to get an introduction to this author if you like romantic fantasy fairy story retellings. Uh, Demelza has dozens of books like this. So if you like her, you're, you're set for life, you know, when it comes to your reading. Um, and thanks, Carla, for reading that for us. Uh, then we have the third book on this list, not the fourth, the third book, 
Ravenite by Alicia Raids, the first of four books in the Vengeance and Vampires urban fantasy series. The other books are $5 each, and they're not in Kindle Unlimited. And I read this one because urban fantasy is one of my favorite genres. I love Buffy and everything, you know, anywhere close to related to this. I love kick-ass protagonists who kill things. And as you can see from this cover, the skin-tight clothing, the sword in her hand, I mean, she's going to kill things. And I love that. I love that in a book. Um, so um, the first sentence of this book is awesome. She says, vampires are easier to kill after you've pecked their eyes out. I love that. So uh, Rachel, that's the protagonist, she can shape shift into a raven. And she can also do magic. Magic has shown up in this world, our world, said in the present day, about eight years ago. And with me, magic uh, came shapeshifters and vampires, including a group of really, really bad vampires called the Soulless. And the Soulless have her sister, and she wants to find them so she can rescue her sister. And to do that, she is killing random vampires and uh, and uh, trying to. And before she kills them, she tries to get him to talk to tell her where the Soulless are. And this, as the book starts, she's found one of these vampires and she's fighting with it. And this vampire is manages to uh, knife her in the leg and the knife is poisoned with some kind of evil vampire poison. And she, she can't uh, win this fight. The vampire escapes. And uh, even though she discovers that that vampire had a lone a soulless tattoo on him so he could have been a lead to finding the soulless and she couldn't get him um and she almost dies but someone shows up and rescues her a mysterious stranger who's also a shapeshifter he turns into a dog and he takes her home so she can do some magic and recover and the two of them team up because they're both looking for the soulless for their own different reasons so this is a fun read an exciting beginning there is going to be romance in there, but you know all the all the action movies have a romantic subplot, so you know you kind of expect that. Um, and I plan to be sticking with it because it looks like a really really fun weekend read. What kind of dog? I it's a dog. I forget what kind of dog it was. I don't even know if she's mentioned what kind of dog he is. Some kind of dog. Some kind of dog. A, a shape-shifting a dog. Bear, a shih tzu, <laughs> I just was curious Pomeranian. if it was a French bulldog, maybe. You know, Chihuahua. All right. Chihuahua. Okay, next we have The House of Matchsticks by Eliza Downing. This is the first of three books in the House of Matchsticks young adult fantasy series. The other books are three and four dollars each, and they're not in Kindle Unlimited. The author has been on this list before, but we previously reviewed this book in February, and I read this one. So, as I mentioned before, I hate young adults. I hate teenagers. Um, but uh, this book really grabbed my attention. It The writing style reminded me of the Shadow and Bone books by Lee Bardugo. So, if you like those books and they made a Netflix miniseries from them, uh, which is also awesome. If you haven't had a chance to watch the Netflix series Shadow and Bone, I highly recommend it. So... Thus, bo this book begins with a collector who's like the Grim Reaper, goes around collecting souls, and he shows up to collect the soul of a woman who's escaping a burning factory, and there's a monstrous man chasing her. The woman is carrying a baby, and she tries to get away on a boat, but the man catches up to her and kills her. And the collector takes her soul, and even though he's not supposed to, he gives a boat a push and saves the baby. And the baby has a locket tucked into its blanket that the woman tucked in there. So 16 years later, the baby's all grown up. Um, she's still wearing that same locket. Her name is Isaline. She was raised in an orphanage and sent to a school for guards. And she's getting ready to take her final exams before graduation. Meanwhile, that horrible man from the first chapter, he's now the king. And he has the power to create magical clockwork creatures. And in fact, he's partially clockwork himself. He made a deal with something evil 16 years earlier. 
and the deal gave him magical powers and he's been killing off all his noble competitors. The story is very compelling. The world building is superb and definitely, definitely something that uh, I want to keep reading. So I recommend this book highly and the series. Um, so check that out. And next we have the number one book on the list by James David Victor called Outcasts of Earth. Here's the cover right there. The first of nine books in the Outcast Marines Space Fleet science fiction series. The other books are a dollar to four dollars each, but they're all in Kindle Unlimited. Um, and the author has been on this list before. So this is a sci-fi story about a bunch of convicts who become space marines. Uh, so Solomon Creedy is hiding out in Hong Kong when the book starts. His hotel room door is knocked down by police robots or maybe cops in robot suits. Alex was or there. Robocops. Oh, Robocops. Yeah. And they had robot dogs. So he's been arrested for murder and he's going to be sent to a penal co colony as punishment, a penal colony on Titan. So this is in kind of like the near to mid future where we have colonies up in space. But it turns out that the Department of Justice and Defense has other plans for Solomon. He's put into hibernation. And when he wakes up, he's on Ganymede, which is one of the moons of Jupiter. And he's part of a work rehabilitation program called the Marine Expeditionary Force, also known as the Outcasts. So instead of his original life sentence on Titan, he only has to serve 12 years in the Marines uh, if he's able to make it out for, for 12 years. So Alex says this could be a fun read for someone who's looking for a space adventure story and, and likes military sci-fi. Alex himself is on the fence about whether he'd keep reading, but he says he might pick it up if he's got nothing else going on. Me, I definitely plan to check it out because I love military sci-fi and um, I love David Drake and all those authors. So I'm going to I'm gonna give it a try. And if I like the author's writing style, and a lot of people do, it's the number one book on today's list, um, I might stick with it. So I particularly like the fact that it's in Kindle Unlimited. So that's always a plus for me. Okay, so those were the books on today's top 10 list. If you like any of those, if you read them or plan to, let us know in the comments. If you have other books to suggest for us to read, whether or not they're on a free Friday list or not, um, absolutely drop us a line. My email address is down in the description box below. We love reviewing books. And if you're an author and you want to come on our show and talk about your writing, uh, we love ha we'd love ha to have you as a guest, so uh, please do that. And if you want to join our review team, you can do that too. And you can be on camera with us, or you can just like write the stuff and we'll read it for you like I do. I did just now for Alex's book. Okay, so Happy New Year, everybody. And we'll see you in 2023. Don't forget to pick up a copy of the anthology. Link is below. And the links to all 10 books are in the description box below as well, as well as the link to the full article that we published earlier today. Thanks, Ravel. Thanks, Terrence. What are you guys doing for New Year's? Pretty quiet. I mean, so. Yeah. Um, well, maybe we'll we'll do something on Zoom just for the Metastellar folks um, on Saturday night. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. I mean, well, well, you, you. I mean, your New Year's is probably, I, I think, probably an hour ahead of. of... Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Robo, for those of you who don't know, is on a tropical island in the Caribbean. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Terrence, sorry, sorry. <laughs> and Terrence and I are in Western Massachusetts, freezing our butts off. So, yeah. <laughs> well, you can come down for carnival. I mean, that's when most people come down, which is like February. And, but, um, you know, it's, it's kind of drunken debauchery. So. Oh, um, drunken debauchery. Hey. Well, you know, if, <laughs> if you're up for it, I mean, I mean, I take no responsibility. But... Right, right, right. <laughs> All right. Maybe not this coming year, maybe the year after that, once everything settles down. But I've been saying that once everything settles down for what three years now, so it's it's about time for things to settle down, and go back to normal. 
All right, here's hoping it happens in 2023. All right, guys, I see you next week. Bye bye. Right. Oh, and happy new year, everybody! Everybody watching. Oh. Happy new year! Yay. Happy new year! Take care and keep safe.